Hey guys, check it out. Behind me is an extremely potent medicinal plant that you need to know. It's called barberry. So the species I have behind me is called desert barberry because we are in the American Southwest today. And I'll go ahead and throw that scientific name on the screen. But there's lots of different species of barberry growing throughout the United States. And so some of the patterns to recognize different species are similar as this barberry. So even if you don't live in the American Southwest, go ahead and stay tuned because I'll show you how to identify this group of plants. And so um, scientifically, barberries are in the genus, two different genera, which is in the genus Mahonia, M-A-H-O-N-I-A, or Berberis, okay? Mahonia or Berberis. Those are the two. And sometimes a, the botanists will disagree, and you'll see this in a book as Mahonia or a Berberis. So oftentimes the difference is uh, it's just up to the botanist to decide. Um, however, oftentimes you'll see plants in the genus Mahonia will have a appearance like this. And I'll show you what one of the leaves look like. They're very thorny and hard to grab without poking yourself. So how about I just zoom in on them for you? There we go. And so plants in the genus Mahonia oftentimes have pinnate leaves, okay? So here is a small pinnate leaf here with uh, sometimes they have three to five leaflets depending on the species or more. And so this species here has three or five leaflets depending on the leaf we're looking at. And they're very thorny. And they're very pale green color. So once you recognize this plant, you can see it from a distance once you tune your eyes into the color because it has this very pale um, light green. Okay, maybe it's not on the camera, you can't tell that as much, but it's very easy to see from a distance. And so there's other plants as well uh, in the genus Berberis that don't have the thorny holly-like leaves, but they actually have um, what we would call spatulate leaves, so leaves that are larger at the end. You just look up a spatulate leaf on Google and you'll see what I'm talking about. Oftentimes spatulate, and um, funny story, actually the first time I ever heard of uh, barberry, it was in a book called Ancestral Plants by Arthur Haynes, and it was a Japanese species, Japanese barberry, and that plant, funny enough, I ended up finding out was growing right on the side of the house I was renting at the time. And so it's a very common plant used in landscaping. And you can get it at herbal medicine stores. Pardon the wind here, it's kind of windy today. And so Japanese barberry is also a very potent plant and many different barberries um, can be used the same way as this. Okay, so when we're talking about barberry, the thing we're really after is an alkaloid called berberine that's found in the bark and roots of this plant. So berberine is a very potent medicine and it's a very bright yellow color, which we'll see whenever I show you how to harvest this plant, you'll see it's a very bright yellow. And so berberine has many medicinal benefits. The first is that it's an anti-inflammatory. So it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory medicine and is also a liver detoxifier, okay? So which something we may call a hepatic herb. And so because of those two things, um, it can cause, it's usually used as what's called a tonic. A tonic is an herb that restores function to a whole organ or system, okay? So many, many problems in the body are caused by inflammation. And if you can, so if you can have an anti-inflammatory and also restore the liver, which also helps with lots of different bodily processes, you have a plant that can really, they can do a lot of good to your body and, and can change a whole lot of stuff because you're really hitting the root cause of lots of different problems that could be occurring in your body. So it's oftentimes considered a tonic herb. Other things that berberine does, okay, it's a antibiotic. It can be used as an antibiotic. Remembering that I am not an herbalist, although I do use this plant and um, other species, uh, I don't take any of this as medical advice because I'm not an herbalist, so I can't, you know, you'd have to talk to a medical professional before using this plant, of course. However, so berberine has been shown to be active against different types of bacteria, different types of viruses, and different types of fungi. So it can be used internally or topically to treat fungal diseases. Um, it can be used as a, for, to help your immune system. So lots and lots. It's really a medicinal powerhouse. So I definitely suggest you go look up berberine. Uh, I've taken the pill form of berberine, pure berberine you can buy in the store. And you know, I mean, who knows? Anecdotally, I would say I like to drink the um, tea better than the pills because I can moderate the dosage. I like to do really high dosages of this plant personally, but I can't say I necessarily recommend doing that. 
And so next I'm going to show you how to harvest this plant and you definitely want gloves with this species. Not all species have thorny type leaves. And another common species you'll find is called organ grape. Okay, it's a very low growing species. Oh, uh, maybe you consider a sub shrub. So which means it's basically a shrub. It comes back year to year, but it's so small that it looks like an herb. Okay, and so the roots of that plant are oftentimes used. So you would use the root bark of this plant or the inner bark, which we can see the outer bark is not yellow, but the inner bark is a very bright yellow. So if you cannot find this plant in the wild, I suggest you go get some Japanese barberry, um, although that's not a professional medical suggestion. So don't take it as that. Now I'm going to show you how to harvest this plant. So first uh, you'll notice it's a very shrubby plant. It's a very, um, it's actually growing under a mesquite tree here. We have a beautiful mesquite and in the understory is a desert barberry. And so uh, you want to find a nice straight section of branch that's um, about this big around. Okay, and so we're going to find that and then I'll go ahead and saw it down and show you how we process it from there. Okay, so before we harvest, uh, I'll go ahead and show you what I was talking about with the pale green color. I don't know if you can see that in there. We have a nice wall of dark green plants. Actually, it looks like a canyon hackberry growing in the uh, background there. And then we have some salt cedar to the right, which is also kind of a light color. But then right in there, we have a desert barberry, which is that nice light color. So let's walk over to it. And this does not apply to all species, but this applies specifically to this species we're dealing with today. And one thing I didn't mention is that all barberries, as far as I know, have yellow flowers. So you would identify it by its yellow flowers, and they're very distinct in that they have, it looks like they have six petals, but if you look closely, they actually have two layers of three. So it'll be three and then three, and we don't have any flowers to demonstrate today. But if you go look at some pictures and pay attention to that pattern of three and three, then you can see how to identify, and that's gonna apply to most plants in the genus Mahonia or Berberis that I know. And so here we have a little bit of a better shot on some of the leaves than the other, and you can really see in this shot how that pale green, that kind of almost blue green, just kind of really pops out at you and can be seen from a distance for this species. So here we have a little bit of a better shot of some of the leaves. So I'll go ahead and show those again. We have, uh, this one looks like it has three leaflets over here. And then uh, this, this little leaf here looks like it actually has five leaflets. And now we see here all the dried berries. So this is not a good representation of what the berries usually look like. But uh, for this particular species, they tend to be red or more often maybe orange. And uh, nice and juicy little berries that are also edible. I don't know if all species of barberry have edible berries, but I think most of them do. And uh, these are going to be red or orange, which many species are. Oregon grape, the one I mentioned earlier, has uh, blueberries, if memory serves, and which are also edible. Usually, though, they're considered very sour, so not really going to be um, something you, that's highly sought after. And so now let's go ahead and look. What I like to do is find a larger plant because we are in the desert and, you know, stuff grows a lot slower out here. So I like to find a larger plant that taking um, a... Uh, branch off of is not really going to harm. It's not going to do anything. So i just taking one branch and I like it to be nice and straight growing so that it's very easy to trim afterwards. And now I'll go ahead and show you that. All right. So I had a little bit of a hard time finding a larger uh, shrub, but this one looks healthy enough. And so I think taking one branch of this is not going to hurt. It's a pretty common plant. So with this plant, you really got to be careful because uh, it is super thorny and it'll just tear you up. Oh, actually, just remember to have some gloves. Go ahead and put these gloves on for this video. Here I have a silky handsaw I'm going to go ahead and use. And so you want a uh, straight section, straight as possible, somewhat unbranched if possible. Um, kind of hard to fit those qualifications with this particular plant because it's a pretty uh, scrubby. I'm just going to go ahead and saw a little section off here. There we go. And I'll go ahead and show you how to process that with a nothing more than a knife to use for medicine. Okay, so here is the branch we've harvested. Somewhat long, somewhat unbranched. So we're going to go ahead and cut off... Uh, the smaller branches, they're going to be too tedious to really harvest. So we'll go ahead and cut this off and then probably cut it off about right there and just get the really big sections. 
so I'll do that really quick. All right, now you see here we have a uh, nice, long, straight, relatively unbranched section that we just cut. And as you can see, I've started to scrape off the outer bark, which is this right here, scraping off that. And it exposes, as you can see there, the beautiful inner bark of this desert barberry plant. And it, you can see that very bright yellow berberine color. And even the wood has a little bit of berberine in it, but it's mostly going to be the inner bark. And so it's a very thin layer, okay? Now, the Japanese barberry that you get from the store is uh, really loaded with berberine all inside of the um, wood as well. So you get a lot more. But from this, we have to very, very carefully... And it keeps wanting to get out of focus, so I'm trying to keep that in focus for you. But you want to very carefully scrape that outer bark off and expose the inner the, the inner bark there. Okay, and as you can see, a couple places I went too deep and I scraped off here too much and it scraped off of the inner bark as well. So we're trying to do very, very slow and careful. And then once we have this here, okay, I'm going to go ahead and move that camera down. And now once we have this, we can then we can start scraping all of this off. And this is the part we use for medicine, okay? So this we would boil, or some people make tinctures with it, or even grind it up into a pill form. And so that is the inner bark of desert barberry plant. So I'm going to go ahead and finish processing this, and then we'll boil some up into a delicious barberry tea, which actually maybe is not so delicious. It's actually a very, very bitter plant, and it takes a lot of getting used to. I like it, though, because I drink it so much, and just knowing the benefits that it has when you drink it will make you forget the bitterness. I mean, it's like people who, you know, drink beer for the benefits it gives them. They just kind of get over the bitter flavor because they want what's inside of it. And so the same thing goes for me with this medicinal plant is uh, I don't care about the bitterness because the benefits far outweigh the taste. All right, so this is what it looks like when we're done. As you can see, we have completely finished stripping off most of the bark. And we have this beautiful, bright yellow color now. So this took about mm, 30 minutes. And the reason it took so long is because we have to very, very carefully remove the outer bark without removing the inner bark. As you can see here, there's a couple white splotches where I cut too deep. And this is a pretty thin bark on this species, okay? And so the bigger the piece is the thicker the inner bark is going to be but you know bigger than this desert barberry usually doesn't get very big and so i don't like to usually cut down really big uh trees although of course in an emergency uh, i would and so um i don't know if i mentioned like uh the uh that the japanese barberry has a lot more berberine within the wood itself and this species is mostly in the um, inner bark, not so much in the wood. And I don't know about the roots of this species, but in some species, the roots are used. And so now we're simply gonna scrape this off. Okay, so we're just gonna start scraping it at a 90 degree angle until we get a bunch of the uh, powder, like we've already shown. And so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape all of this off and then show you what the finished product looks like. <laughs> All right, so now we have here the finished product. As you can see, most of the inner bark has been stripped off of this piece of desert barberry. And we have this berberine rich inner bark. And you can see some of the wood got, you know, mixed in with it. That's no big deal. And it's really the outer bark, you know, you can mix that in. It's not a big deal. Um, you just, I don't know if you'd want to do a whole lot of the outer bark and it doesn't have the medicinal um, you know, properties that, are, that the inner bark has. Maybe it has tannins in it which, I don't know, potentially could give, give you constipation if you had enough um, of the outer bark. So I always remove the outer bark. So the whole process from harvest um, of one of these sticks, shaving off the bark and then harvesting the inner bark, probably takes about maybe an hour, an hour. So it's a very, very good um, plant as a substitute for antibiotics. And now I will show you how to 
uh, boil this into tea. However, I'm probably the last person on earth that you would ever want to trust with something like dosage information because when it comes to medicinal plants, uh, like I said, I'm not an herbalist. And um, I usually, if I know a plant's medicinal, man, I just dose it up. I just, you know, I'll usually do like higher doses and I just, it's random. I do it different every time. So I couldn't really give you solid dosage information of this plant, but I'm sure that's something you can find online. And you also want to make sure that the species of uh, barberry or uh, mahonia in your area is going to be one that is indeed used in herbal medicine. So you always want to check with a local expert first because I don't know all of the different species, although I do assume that many of them can all be used in the same way. I don't know that for a fact. And so now let's go ahead and boil some of this up and we'll drink the tea. All right, this doesn't look like much, but it's actually the very source of a spring. So coming right out the ground here. So we're just gonna that here we go pop it right on this little wood stove here which is uh, kind of blazing pretty hot because I just started it it'll calm down here in a second maybe we'll pour a little bit of water out it's a little bit much there we go now we we'll wait for a boil all right, now that we're starting to heat up a little bit, hadn't come to a boil yet, but that's okay. And like I said, I'm not the dosage man, so uh, I'll probably just put about that in there. You always want to boil barberry for a good five, 10 minutes. And uh, I like to reuse it a couple times because if you boil it again, it'll still, the tea will still be yellow. So now we'll go ahead and wait for that full boil for five to ten minutes. Alright, go ahead and put some more in here. Get this stuff going. Alright. Nice little boil on there. It's been going for a while, so we'll go ahead and take that off. And let it cool. Nice dark yellow. All right, got the tea finished, nice and cool. Let's try it out. Ah. Mm. Definitely bitter. You can taste that spring water. I definitely could have made it stronger. It's just way, way more bitter usually. overall really good well guys thanks for watching my name is matthew hunter i am the lead instructor and founder of legacy wilderness academy where we teach about edible plants medicinal plants survival skills bushcraft preparedness and sustainable design thanks for watching